नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्धस नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समुद्धस so uh, we uh, start this session uh, which is a special session because uh, sister kema uh, mata ji kema is uh, in uh, retreat and uh, she is uh, having kind of a, a good success uh, people are progressing in the her retreat uh, because this is a in person retreat after a long time so she is kind of giving her uh, all uh, her attention to that and she is also having a, a little problem with her eye uh so we will uh, start this session with uh, you uh, giving a introduction on uh, how to about uh, sukhita yoga how to him and uh, his kind of association with uh, uh, the practice of meditation and uh, we will kind of uh, take it uh, from there okay you i'll give it okay. to you oh. thank, thank you thank you very much so so i'm i'm hugh and this is sarah and, and together we teach a form of yoga called uh, sakita now it would be very helpful to us if um you would allow the video to be on so that we can uh work through the video with you uh so for those of you who are comfortable with the video please uh place it on okay thank you thank you, you so much thank you <laughs> So um, when we uh, were asked to do this, um, we put together a little bit of uh, a few words, and I just want to read those words because this is the starting point that we're going to to work through for, for today. So we said that in this session we'll explore how Sakita Yoga prepares the body for deeper states experienced in tranquil wisdom insight meditation. If you ever wondered how you might comfortably sit for longer periods. or are curious how balancing the mind in physical movement can support a meditation practice uh, it would be good to join in today so one of the things that's really important uh, that we find in the sakita yoga is recognizing the link between the mind and the body and the body and the mind there's a two way feedback going on here and one of the things that's very helpful in a sitting practice is if we can sit physically with as little tension as possible so that when the tension in our mind is uh, becomes visible it manifests then there's a corresponding tension in the body that's very clear to see uh, and this means then that we are able to use the body as a way of prompting us about what's going on in the mind and also to tell us about what's going on so that what we notice is that if we successfully as it were release the tension in our mind what we find is that the body comes back up into balance and also is free of tension so one of the things we want to do is discover if you like what do we need to do in order to be able to sit in meditation without tension or with as little tension as possible So what we've put together today is not so much a yoga sequence but a sequence using yoga principles which is to encourage your body body to open up and release so tension in your hips tension in your shoulders perhaps a, a tightness in your lower back um or any other areas but once we're working with this what we find is that then we can move this approach into a way of working not only in daily life but also in the sitting meditation as well so we're going to take you through um some warm up movements we're going to take you through some uh standing postures uh which are uh, designed to take tension out of your body but also as part of that to discover a an in um an internal form of support that is present in all of our body now the buddha talked about uh the importance of vitality in fact he, he described the difference between uh, a dead body and a body that's in cessation 
as one, as a body that still had vitality, still had heat present, and still had a form of consciousness there compared to a dead body. And this vitality uh, and energy in the form of heat, this is what we're using to support our physical body. So we get beyond, if you like, using our muscular tension to hold our body up. And we get to a point where we're using this energetic presence to support our body. And then when we do that, what this allows us to do is relax the body as far as our muscles and our joints are concerned. And if we can keep our body relaxed in this way, then we're much more able for, to sit for longer periods without the discomfort of a tightness or a restriction of circulation or a, a, a numbing of certain parts of the body uh, or the sort of meditation pain that Bhante uh, from Ramsey would sometimes will talk about. Um, and allowing yourself then to sit more comfortably uh, allows your mind to have less tension in it. There's nothing like having a stiff hip or an uncomfortable back to be a real challenge to relaxing the tension inside your head around your brain. So what we want to do is explore some exercises and movements that will allow you to release this tension. Is there something you'd like to add? I think only to reiterate with one word, the, the, the very beautiful connection with these practices and that's balance. So all of you will be very familiar with uh, the experience of balance when, it, when it's um, appearing in your meditation and when there is uh, ripples, if you like, in, in the balance, things going in and out of balance. And in the practice that Hugh is, is, is guiding us with, we're, we're learning to feel when movement is in and out of balance. And so although we're working through the physical body, so it's, it's a much more gross way of working with tension than when we're working um, in, in, the, in the meditation in a, in a formal sitting practice, you can still see and work with this inception arising of tension that closes down the mind and the body. And then if you learn to notice it, release, relax, smile, and let it open out again. And this is allowing the vitality of the body to be present and, and vital. Then, then the, the body also becomes transparent. And you have a, a feeling in, in the physical body of, of move of, of balance and, and a sense of space. So that, that, that's kind of where things um, develop, but it's enormously supportive of, of the practice that we do in the meditation, that we've got this another way of listening through the physicality of the body that, that's showing us where we get in our own way. And if we can learn to get out of our way, things start to flow and feel more at ease. And that's something that I have um, hugely benefited from in, 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 in my life because I, I came to the physical side first. So things started to open up, like Hughes mentioned, tight hips, um, sore spine, very, very classic areas that we hold tension in our physical body, shoulders, another one. I, I was quite curved in, closed in, and I didn't have a, a what you would describe as a, a very good posture um, when, I, when I first came to, to this movement. But gradually, the physical body is opened up. And because he, he guides us in a way that we're not forcing and pushing and straining, all, the, all these words you'll be familiar with in, in the meditation about what we're not supposed to be doing. We need to be relaxing and allowing, certainly being very attentive when tension arises, but we don't want to ever make anything happen. So this is very much of a observing, uh, is bringing the capacity to observe very, very um, 
to be very, very present in, in the physical movement. And it, it's hugely transformative. So I think it's probably time that we give it a go. So today's session is, um, it's not going to, we, we, we have different uh, ways of experiencing this movement. Some are very dynamic um, and, and would be perhaps a more traditional expression of yoga and lots of salutations and a lot of balances. We're not going to go do that kind of thing with you today. We're going to have a, a session where it's much more uh, yoga principles, like you said, within the movement so that you can see that there's a there's a, a, a realism around how we can move and how that can be in your daily life and how it can make the the, the sitting practice um, just more more settled uh, more more available more grounded more energized and I think that's probably enough unless unless you have any questions before we begin. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I'd like to remind you is we're familiar with the six R's through Bhante's teaching. And that's related to the mind being distracted, being drawn away, and the corresponding tension that we feel around our physical brain. Well, equally with the body, when we get distracted, we move out of the awareness of what we're doing, and we end up trying to push our body too far. And when we push the body, we get a physical tension. And we treat the physical tension in exactly the same way as we would teach or treat the mental tension. When you see the physical tension arise, that's when we recognize that we're not present, working from this natural vitality that we have, that we've moved into thinking about the shape, we've moved into a concept. It's like we're thinking about the meditation rather than being the meditation. Yeah. So when we're thinking about the shape, we tend to move into places where the body's under tension. So then we need to recognize that's happened and then ease out of the posture just enough for the tension to disappear. And that's like relaxing the tension around your brain. And we softly smile again. We smile because what we're looking to do is, as we work through this, this practice should be a very enjoyable practice. It should bring a sense of flow. Into our, into our movement. And it doesn't matter how deeply you go into the posture or how shallowly, what you do is you work to the edge of this tension and we stay at that edge. Uh, you don't push through the tension because if you do that, you'll notice a number of things happening. The first thing you'll notice is that your body temperature goes up. The next thing you'll notice is that your mind goes tight. Then you'll notice that your body has gone tight in the joints. And then you'll notice that it's much harder to breathe. You have to work at your breath. Now, if you see any of those four things happening, you need to back out of the posture just a little so that your breath becomes free and easy and naturally deep, that your body doesn't feel tight and stiff because you've pushed too far, that your mind then begins to expand and you'll notice your body temperature comes back to normal. And so we've got these markers in the physical body that tell us when we've moved into, into this tension. And once we've done that, what we notice is that we also have a corresponding tension to be aware of in our physical mind, in our physical brain. Because when our brain gets tight, we'll notice our body gets tight. And so sometimes we just need to relax the tension around our brain and our body begins to flow again. So play with those things as we go through the session uh, today. And then there'll be plenty of time to ask us questions afterwards. And if there's anything that wasn't clear, we can just explore elements of that uh, again. So any questions before we start? No? So, Please, if you can, try to keep your video on because that gives me a frame of reference uh, that we're, when we're working and that's very helpful. Okay. We decided to, um, we're, we're in a place at the moment with absolutely no furniture. So we've got a, a, a curious bench behind and 
uh, we were going to sit on that for some movement because I, I know a lot of people will um, sit in meditation on chairs, but equally, I think I've noticed at least one person with a mat on the floor. And of course, you can feel free to be on a mat on the floor too for the session. One other thing, just as Hugh's sorting out, pinning the picture, don't, don't, don't move into anything that's painful. I mean, these are quite pared down movements today, but really, really look after your body. This is a kind practice. So we don't want anything that is, is moving into force where, where you cause a, cause a problem. Okay. Yeah. And if you know that you've already got an injury or condition and that limits your movement in some degree, don't then override what you would normally avoid simply because we're doing it. Just work to the edge of what is comfortable for you. Okay. So let's, do you want to come and be on the floor? To sort the screen out. Okay. So we come over. And I'll just move over this way. Okay. So welcome to this uh, session of Sakiti Yoga, movement for meditation. First of all, it's important that you're sitting comfortably. Now, that might be sitting on the floor and that might be sitting on a chair. And it's important that you should sit so that the backs of your thighs are not being crushed by the edge of the chair. Okay, so this is exactly the same as it would be for a sitting meditation. So here I've put a bolster underneath my feet to make sure that the backs of my thighs are relaxed. I'm sitting forward on the chair just enough so that my sitting bones are comfortably on the chair, but the backs of my thighs are away. Okay. Now, if you're sitting cross-legged, make sure that you're comfortable here. And we're gonna go through a series of exercises. But first of all, we're going to do a grounding exercise. So I'd like you to gently close your eyes. Place your hand on your lower abdomen. And just breathe into this place. Feel the breath swelling into your hand and releasing. And then as you breathe in, I want you to count the length of your breath in and then make your breath out half as long again. So if you count it in for four, breathe out for six. If you count it in for six, breathe out for nine. Now relax any holding or bracing around your physical brain and gently smile. And recognize how that tunes you in to the sensations in your body. So now come to the crown of your head and slowly move through your body, softening around any holding and bracing you notice or any area of absence or void or vacuum in your body, an area of no feeling. 
and just soften around the edges, not trying to make it different. Keep relaxing the tension you feel around your brain and softly smile as you do this. Now, once you've brought your attention through your body, down into the sitting bones and the feeling of your legs or feet on the floor, stay present with this sensation of contact. And pay particular attention to whether this sensation of contact feels hard or soft whether it's warm or cool, whether it's vibrating or still, and whether it remains constant or changes. Simply allow yourself to feel it. Now, be aware of where your navel is and come down below your navel about two inches, about five centimeters, and deep in the body. And this is a place we're going to move from. So all our movement starts from this place. So bring your attention here. Now, with your attention here, gently rotate your inner thighs just a little to relax your hips, your buttocks, and give space in your lower back. And then bring your mind up your spine until you're between your shoulder blades and let the inner edge of your shoulder blades just drop to your hips a little. So you feel like your shoulder blades rotate just a touch. And what you feel is the space around your heart becomes softer. It's only a very small movement, but the tension around your heart begins to release. Now, come back to this place below your navel and deep in your body and begin to move that place in a circle, very small circle. And notice where you're holding and resistant in your body. And then softly smile and relax around the edges of this tension in your body. And relax any holding around your physical brain. So as you move your center, your body begins to follow the movement to keep your spine in balance. So relax your body, gently smile. Relax the tension around your brain and gently smile and begin to let that center move a little bit more into a slightly bigger circle. And notice how you're inviting your body to relax so that it can move and keep you in balance. So you're gently easing round and then gently work back in the opposite direction. 
And one direction may feel easier than the other. That's fine. Now, bring your attention to your hips. Softly rotate your inner thighs a little, not much, and begin to give permission for your hips to open up and begin to roll around their joints. So give permission for your hips to soften. If need be, you can place your hands on your hips and feel the warmth of your hands to let your body ease out. And then you begin to feel like your body's rolling around on the floor rather than pushing down. Now, drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades once more, relax any holding around your brain and softly smile. Now, if you notice as you begin to relax around your brain and smile, your body begins to free up. It feels just that little bit more available for movement. Soften around any tension and then come back to center. Now keep this center moving in a very small circle. So your body is remaining dynamic all of the time. And then when you're ready, come into this center in your body and allow this center as it were to move towards your spine and let your head drop down. Now, drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades so you feel your heart's opening and your back of your neck is long. Don't pull your chin down. Your head is just dropping down to stay in balance. And then draw your center away and let your body ease up. Shoulders release, let your heart open. You're not pushing into gripping. No tightness in your neck here, please. You're simply allowing your head to move to keep you in balance. And then draw your center in and let your body come down. Draw your center away and let your body come up. Exhale, and then back to neutral. So now move your center around and just check in. And if you smile, you may find that your head now begins to be part of the movement, part of your balance. So as you're beginning to move around, your body is beginning to loosen up. And now draw your center in and let your chin come down, but give permission for your head to be able to move from side to side. And then as you draw your center forward, let your head release up and then draw your center back in towards your spine, your body comes down. Center away and let your head roll to one side and back. So you're not lifting your head. As you move your center forward, your head rolls to keep the space in your lower back and then draw your center back in. Center away, and let it roll, and center back in. So it takes time, center away, to give up the feeling of control by thinking of yourself as a shape, rather than thinking of yourself as balance. So come back to center, and let your head float on your spine. Now, bring your attention deep below the navel here again, and in the body. And it's like we're opening this center to the left and relax your body round to the right. Now, it will go so far and then you'll see the edge of tension. So be gentle now. Just go a little bit further, force yourself round, but very softly. And notice how your breath is a, become more labored. Your tension in your body is there. Your mind has become tight and your body temperature is starting to rise. Now, come back until you feel all of those disappear. Now, come into your center, and it's as if you're opening the center to the left and let your body relax round to the right until it hits the edge of tension. And then move your center in a clockwise direction. So your body is still soft and able to move. You're not gripping your body and then draw your center back and open it to the right as it were and release your body to the left. Okay, so you're not pulling your body round, it's releasing round. And draw your center back, good. 
Okay, so now move your center from side to side. Okay. So now what we can do is we can place our left hand over on our right thigh or hip. Relax our left arm up. So it's not that we're pulling it up. We're going to move our center forward and let our arm rise. And then open this center, as it were, to the right and relax your body to the left and keep your mind in your right sitting bone. Softly rotate your inner thighs. It's an inward medial rotation. It's only a small one. Drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades and then draw your center back and the body comes up. Center away and release your left hand. Now mind in your left hip, right hand over on the left hip or the left thigh. Move or open your center to the left and release your body. And We're beginning to see that this movement comes from our center. So we'll repeat that again, center away, open to the right and relax your body out. So you're not trying to stretch to the left. This is a release. And then open that center towards the left, come back, swap your hands around. And... Okay, now move your center in a circle and listen to your hips and your shoulders and your spine. So softly rotate your inner thighs, drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades and let your body ease round and work back the other way. Okay, so now interlock your fingers. Center away and let your body ease up and lengthen. Mm -hmm. And then relax your hands out and elbows out to the side. So now draw your center forward and feel your heart opening to keep the balance in your back. You don't have to pull your elbows back. Your heart's simply opening. So you can think of it as your elbows going wide. And then draw your center in and let your elbows come in. And then inhale, center away and let your body come up. Exhale, center in. Inhale, center away. Exhale, center in. Inhale. Good. Now let your hands remain here. Open your center to the left and relax your body round to the right. Don't pull with your arms. They're just going along for the ride. And then reverse that and work the other way. And back. And back. And back once more. And then center in and relax your arms down, elbows stay where they were, and center away. So this is working with your shoulders. So drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades so you don't feel tension in your shoulders. Center in, center away. Center in and center away, and exit. And move your center in a circle once more. Okay, now with your feet on the floor or on a bolster, draw your center in and let your body come forward and let your hands come down your legs. And then move your center in a circle once more and down. If it's comfortable, you can drop your head and lengthen out in your lower back. Gently release your lower back, allowing your spine to open up and release. And then look up. And on the next breath in, draw your center away and let your body come all the way up and shake out. Good. Now, if you can, take your hands behind you and hold onto the back of your chair. Now, only do this if your chair hasn't got wheels on or anything like that, so it's nice and firmly on the ground. Draw your center forward and let your body ease off the chair. And you can see what Sarah's doing here is she's sitting cross-legged, hands behind, and her center's coming forward. 
and exhale, come back. Okay, and move your center in a circle once more. Good. Okay, now shake out and let all of your body release. So it's like you're shaking tension out of your body. Okay, so now we're gonna to move to standing and we're gonna work at opening up and releasing our body further. So allow your body to come up. I'm just gonna move this back. The sitting floor is left, show your weight to come up. Extend it to feel free enough. You can either send it in like this, releasing forward. Then tuck your toes under, guide your center up high into your spine, walk your hands in, and relax in a forward bend. And then with soft knees, feel your feet, spring forward from your center and come up to standing. So we're going to work with some standing postures now. So Okay, so separate your feet, hip width wide, soft knees, and like Hughes mentioned in when we were sitting, a rotation of your inner thighs towards the middle of your body. It's really subtle. It's like a tiny tilt, but it helps the hips ease outwards. And then relax. Lots of relaxing coming now. Feeling your feet. Now we're going to guide a low down movement to the right and release our body to the left. Exhale. Over to the left, release your body to the right and exhale. So inhale as we release one way. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And then let your body relax into this movement. Soften around your brain. Allow your body to flow. Breathing in and breathing out. And then release your arms parallel with your shoulders. Still soft with your knees, planted through your feet. And then we're going to spring forward, center away from your spine, center back in. Breathing in and out. You can keep this movement quite shallow, or you can come all the way down, arms coming up and over and relaxing up to the vertical. So this movement is really getting us in touch with this inner energy of the body, vitality of the body. Inhale, exhale, last one, and release. Another shake out. Close your eyes, release through the wrists, fingertips, up through the elbows, shoulders, neck, head. Down through your torso, hips, knees, spine, feet. And relax. Soften through the feet. Breathe. Place one hand on your heart, one on your lower abdomen. And start to really feel that stability through your feet. Soften the front of your face. Lift the corners of your eyes, the corners of your mouth. And allow yourself to feel the sense of internal space in your body. And then gradually begin to circle through your center, round one way, back in the other direction. And we're looking here to let the movement begin from this natural place and then allow the body to follow so that we're not controlling and making shapes, but we're learning how to feel in balance in the physical body. Relaxed, open, Spacious, breathe, smile, let it be simple. And then guide your body into a figure of eight. 
side to side. You can keep your hands on your heart, your lower abdomen, if that's helpful. Changing direction. And these movements sometimes can feel really stiff and tricky with the spine feeling tense or the hips gripping. And this is where we need to really relax the mind to allow the movement to come into view. I'm gonna change direction, looping forwards and backwards. Now, as soon as you meet tension, soften, soften in the brain, relax, smile. Soften around the edges of the tension you meet in your body. Breathe. One more direction, down towards the ground and up towards the sky. Breathing in and out. And then exhale, relax everything. Shake everything out. All that tension you've been meeting, just let the body ease out and then resettle and plant through your feet. Inhale, center away from your spine, let your arms rise, exhale, center back, let your arms release down, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Start to feel how you can be planted and at the same time energized and light in your body. Shoulders relaxing, arms feeling free. Torso long, exhale, spine inwardly supported, and relax. Guide your center in and release into a forward bend. Now gently rock here from side to side. Just take a moment to look at your feet. Lengthen out your toes. Feel the arches alive in your feet. And then... Soften up the back of your legs, relax the back of your knees, rotate the inner thighs again. Guide your center into your spine. So your upper body is free to relax downwards. And this is how we learn to de-stress the shoulders, to start to unpick the holding patterns in the body, the ways we habitually hold tension. Replacing them with a healthy structure, a wholesome body. Feel your feet, feel your center. As you inhale, spring forwards from your center and trust that movement. Exhale, good. We're gonna heel toe out. So here's a classic standing movement called triangle. So point your right toes down the length of your mat if you're on a, on a mat. And then inhale, we want the arms to feel light. So let's ripple through our shoulders as we let our mind settle in this back foot. So you want a real sense of contact with the earth here. Breathe, feel your internal length through to the crown of your head. And as you breathe out, we're gonna let that length connect with the back foot. And then our upper body is free to relax and open. So don't worry if you're not down where I am, you may be here. What's key is we let the body release to the movement of the center of our body. So we're training to guide our mind to have these directions internally. It's like an internal choreography. And then we relax about the execution of them. Now turn, look at your front foot. Now we're gonna have the center moving towards it. So the upper body learns to feel light in response. Turn your feet, breathing in. Find this internal length, be with your back foot. As you exhale, let your length connect with your back foot and relax your body forward. Softly smile, stabilize through the back foot. Energize to your center. Relax the space around your heart. Breathe. Smile and soften around the edges of any tension in the mind, any tension in the body. Turn, look at your front foot. Now we're going to guide the center towards it and spring forwards 
and turn our feet to face forward. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. One more. And then we're going to have a play at floating. So we're going to move our attention from our feet to our center. We're going to trust the movement internally away from the spine back in. Taking the mind out of the feet into the center. And then following that movement, so the legs float in and your body feels light. So now for a balance, be in the left foot. Take the weight out of the right foot. So you can see here how we're learning to guide the mind to settle in different ways in the body. So here we're with earth through the foot. And then we're feeling a lightness through this leg. Fluidity in the joints. And then we're tucking the foot in low. Or if you want to, and it's available in your body, you can bring the foot a little higher. Now we need the mind to settle and be stable with the standing foot. So we're playing here with balance in the mind and in the body. Relax, feel the sense of space across the middle. Then we need to harness this vitality and expand upwards and outwards and allow your body to be in balance. Smile, breathe. You can move your center from side to side in little circles just to see can your mind or body remain settled, light, open, relaxed? Exhale. Guide your center in a little and let your outer body follow this movement. And then let's explore on the other side. We start with our attention in the standing foot and we feel that stability. And with that settling of the mind and the body, this other leg can be relaxed. We don't need to hold on. And we can tuck the foot in low or high. So this is often a balance that people practice where they seem to feel a real need to tense in the muscles, the joints, laboring, making a lot of effort to create a balance. But this is an expression of balance that comes from release. That's what we're practicing. Stabilize through the foot, energize through the center, expand upwards and outwards through your body. Relax your shoulders. Smile, breathe. <laughs> Allow the balance to unfold. As you exhale, guide your center back in and simply observe the outer body moving in harmony with this inner movement. Look out your legs, shake out your body. Softly smile, close your eyes, re-feel your feet. Nice long breath in and a long breath out. Okay, now come back to seated. And find the center again and gently move this in a circle and back and check out how you feel. Make sure that you're supported with your feet so that you don't crush the back of your thighs. Softly rotate your inner thighs. Draw your center forward just enough for your lower back to expand, but not be tight so you can move your center in a circle. Drop the inner edge of your shoulder blades so you feel that your heart is open and it's soft around your heart. Feel like your spine is free to snake from side to side when you move your center. 
from side to side, and that your head is floating on top of your spine. Relax any holding, embracing around your brain. Softly smile. And remember what Bhante Ramsey says. Drops. Don't resist or push. Soften and smile. So now, Bringing up a feeling when you felt joyful or happy. Just draw into your normal meditation practice. When your mind gets distracted, when you recognize that's happened, just momentarily recognize the position of your body. Release away from the distraction, relax the tension around your brain. And as you do that and softly smile, relax your body so that it can come back into balance. You don't need to do anything with it. Just don't hold it. Take away all the holding in your mind, all the holding in your body. And your body will relax back up into balance. And then come back to your meditation object.
Resist the temptation to hold your body in shape. Come into this center below the navel, deepen your body. Let this center express and open forward a little to release your spine into the vertical posture.
drops. Don't resist or push. Soften and smile. Gently bring your attention back to your breath and sitting in the sense of contact. Take a deliberate breath in and out. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, slowly open your eyes. Thank you. So we're just going to move into a period of uh, any questions and answers or any further explanation you'd like. So we're just going to come up to the, to the camera. Okay. So how did you find the uh, exercises that we went through and the uh, awareness that that brings perhaps to your sitting posture? So, um, Bharat, I see that you're on, yeah. on mute, so perhaps I could ask you to start yeah. with. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, session. You know, integrating uh, yoga with uh, TWIM was uh, something uh, I never did before and uh, it did uh, help my uh, meditation. So I could settle down very quickly and, you know, uh, progress very fast because of the uh, start that we had with the yoga. So I, uh, I, I think it is definitely... Uh, worthwhile. So my first uh, question was, uh, you know, how long do you uh, advise uh, for this uh, you know, pre uh, or preparation before the real meditation? Well, that's, that's a very good question because um, you, you could just do uh, three or four, five minutes uh, or you could do a little bit longer. I suppose it would depend if you, if you just got out of bed, you might want to do a little bit longer because the body's just got used right. to being in bed and it needs to ease up. If you've had a reasonably active day, then you might not need to do so much. But if you spent most of the day sitting down at a desk at the office or driving or something like that, then you need to do a little bit more. But it's really a question of listening to your own body and feeling, getting used to feeling when it's ready. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the other one was about, you know, uh, uh, what uh, we are taught in uh, Satipatthana Sutta, that is the mindfulness of body. So mm. this is exactly what we are doing. Uh, is that correct? Or uh, is my interpretation different? Yes, I, I think the, the mindfulness of the body in Satipatthana, if we're, if we're not careful, we tend to read that as I need to know where my arms are, I need to know where my feet are, I need to know what shape I'm making. Whereas I think what we're actually looking at there is an awareness, a soft awareness, a bit like the collected um, concentration, the samadhi, the collected awareness of being just with the body as it moves, so that we're conscious of this movement rather than fixed with the idea of an external shape. That's kind of like getting fixed with the idea of how a particular uh, a meditative jhana should feel like or look like, and rather than letting the experience be itself. Right, right, yeah. My, my experience around this, um, is, is it, I'm just trying to think, I think the, the comparison with when I first started a meditation practice and first started a yoga practice, what you can perceive at that point and what you experience can, it is really very different from what's evolving as, as time moves on and you become more experienced. So my mindfulness of the body 
in a physical practice began with finding components of my body. I didn't actually have a whole um, roadmap. I couldn't feel everything in my body. Parts were missing, other parts were really very, very tight. So I didn't have, my, my initial introduction to my own body was, oh, this is a body very out of balance, oh dear. So a bit like when you first meditate, oh, oh dear. <laughs> there's a whole monkey mind going on and I had no idea that, that that's what I'm in. And then, then the mindfulness of the body shifts in time. And, and so now my, my experience is, is really very different from the beginning. And it's more like you saying, there's a, there's a collected awareness of the, like the whole of the body as it's moving and the space in the body. And if I direct my mind to my foot, I feel my foot. And when the yoga is really going well, the rest of the body is not present in, in the way that it used to be. It's a different presence. So it's, um, I guess, I, I suppose it's, it's an evolving picture. And this, this is what's so very interesting about it, that the, the physical moving practice can, um, can change. Your, you, as your awareness grows, the physical experience changes and, and you, you become um, mar, mar, much more out, out of your own way. And then the body feels very, very light. And, and so this is a, um, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very wholesome way of, of, of being in this vehicle in our, in our daily life. But it's also a very wholesome practice, I feel, as, as the preparation for where we can go when we leave the body behind. You start to see the first, um, the first stages of leaving the body behind in this practice. One of, one of the things that we, we talk about um, is that the, when our mind becomes free of tension, it, there has, there's a transparency to it, if you like. It, it doesn't get clouded, it gets clear. And there's a transparency that comes to, the, to our body in the same way. So we don't connect and kind of own what the body is doing so much because balance becomes an, like an impersonal experience. Balance is the body without tension. Mm -hmm. And when we are owning our body, we tend to create tension. And so there's a, there's a nice correspondence there between the way the body becomes materially less important mm -hmm. as, we, as we progress in the, in the way that also corresponds to the development through TWIM uh, as well. So we get much less concerned about the shape we're making, what it looks like. It's really about whether there's a process of balance going mm. on and the process of releasing tension. What I would say around, around this, I mean, I completely agree with that, with all of that, obviously, um, is, is <laughs> when I've had very deep seated tension, um, it, that, that's kept me, uh, very much in, in the yoga, in the physical body. And I suppose it's a bit akin to, I don't know if you'd agree with this, like in, in the meditation, you might need to spend a period of forgiveness. In the, in the body, when I've been working with something very, very um, held and, and brittle in me, I've needed to spend a time taking care of that. Not, not, over, not over focusing on it, but allowing it to to have time to unfold and and that and that's a that's a, a shift in our physical movement practice to give more attention to a place that feels very um yeah out of balance in 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 some way so for instance if we've got a, an injury or um some habitual tension that we're familiar with um this is very much like if we get caught in a repetitive thought cycle mm -hmm. in, in the twin that's that's all that's that's um and um you know anti dharma Gavesi or sister kima might suggest that we go into a period of forgiveness meditation to 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 work with what that uh, cycle is and as sarah says the forgiveness meditation has an equivalent in this practice 
And that's the softening around the edges of a part of the body which feels particularly uh, restricted, so it might be, say, a shoulder. And the softening around the edges is about turning our aversion or our attachment to, to this condition into acceptance. And it doesn't mean that the shoulder becomes then some mm. perfect shoulder that's mm -hmm. wonderfully repaired, but mm. it's no longer an obstruction to the practice. Mm. And that's a bit like the forgiveness. The event that was being forgiven or worked with hasn't changed historically. It's been there and it's there still, but our relationship to that event is, or the person or whatever has changed significantly. Um, um, my, my experience with that is, like Hugh says, it's enormously important. We have no expectation around fixing anything. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the absolute essential is the, the nature of uh, the kind, the kind relating that we're we're building in the way we're 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 dealing with whatever the restriction is in in the body, um, the 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 relief, if you like, and um, any release that comes, is is the byproduct of of that kind attention we're giving, and um, certainly my experience is huge release does happen in the body. There's enormous uh, potential for relieving deep-seated tension. It's a very, very healing practice. Um, I, I have a, a hip I've worked with for many years, which is um, so massively changed from how it used to present. And that that is all from this way of working. There still is some residual tension in there, and maybe that will always be, be, be with me. Um, but the, 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 the onward manifestation um, has, has completely changed. And, and so I don't even, um, yeah, and I, I, I think, but the, the much deeper learning around that is I, I really know that I need to be kind to my hip my hip is my friend, it's not my enemy, it's not part of my body to hate and want fixing. And it, it's, it's a reminder, a physical reminder all the time about this, this practice of responding kindly and wisely to tension. So even then you see, when you've got things going on in your body, they can then become the, 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 the trigger for, for this practice. Uh, rather than um, a source of annoyance and wanting things to disappear. Hmm. That's a very long yeah. answer to a very short question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I learned a lot of uh, things about the body, so thanks. Lovely, great. Um, <laughs> uh, other, other people, so... Um, uh, uh, anyone else like to come in with a, a question? Perhaps, uh, perhaps Gwen. How did you find it? Hi. Hi, Gwen. Hello, Hi. Gwen. Hi. Thank you very much. It was a lovely session. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's a beautiful way uh, to practice the yoga uh, by following the breath. Over the years, I've been doing yoga for many years, right? And I have a lot of accident cases like back injury and things like that and back neck, etc. And when I was doing yoga all this while, it was like more getting into the pose, yeah. getting mm. it correct, getting yeah. the shape right. So when I took up meditation under Bhante Punaji, he taught us yoga. Just to understand the tension, the release, and the uh, how to hold it, to find the tension, and then to let go and feel that release. So with that, I did my yoga in a different way. Uh, mm -hmm. It's more like a flow now. It's like a fluid <laughs> flow. I move into the breath and let the breath guide as to how much I can go. So because of that, I realized that I could actually um, do satipatthana, looking at the body as it is moving in the section, into, into the pose, and how much I can go, and how much to let go, and how much to, how much tension that I'm having for the day. And I realized that it changes. 
Mm. It's never the same. Yeah. If I practice, mm -hmm. if if we practice yoga every day, every single day for a few minutes, it gets easier. Mm. But if we lapse, then it's very difficult. So what mm -hmm. I learned from both of you, this is my second session with you, is the the kindness, you know, the kindness feeling. I know mm -hmm. about the flow. I know about the uh, how to how to flow into it, the fluidness, the softness. Um, but to realize that how we can slowly release it is, is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially around the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, around the heart, this part, when you were doing this, mm -hmm. right? And doing this, uh, you could feel the kind of energy, the vibration that's coming on. Mm -hmm. At first, it was very, very hot, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And as you let go, and uh, with the six hours, you go through that and you let go, you note, you let go, and then you smile. This gets easy and you sort of like yourself very much. Hmm. I think for the first time you like yourself, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite difficult. Most of the time you say, why is it I can't do it? Why is it so tight? Why am I so upset? Mm -hmm. No, but for the first time, it's okay. It's tight, it's okay. Um, it's getting better and then yeah. suddenly you just feel that you know you have like the kind of lovely feeling in there yeah. and the body temperature goes back normal yes. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so I think I have very important lessons I've learned tonight I'm glad I made this decision because there were three sessions on three lectures on wow you came to, to this one and and your comments about the breath are very interesting and, and very uh, prescient around mm. move, movement. Yeah. Um, and then the, 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 the migration is it, to see if we can move that awareness to this energetic, um, because then the energetic can be present when the breath becomes very, very low, very soft. Yeah, it's very dynamic. I, I, was, I was, at one point I was moving very fast. And as you are aware, so I'm doing Qigong also. And mm -hmm. one of my Qigong practices is easy Qigong, which is like what you did just now. You just stand and let the body just move itself. Yeah. Mm. And when I do easy Qigong, I can go into ballet. I've never learned ballet. But if I allow my body to lead and the breath to lead, I go into a dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this, um, everything is connected now, you know what I mean? Yeah. You learn different things over the years and things are like being connected. Yeah. And then when you're doing it, you realize that, oh, this is my meditation. Yes. I'm watching it as an observer. Mm. That's the feel. I'm not the player. I'm just the observer. Yeah. Mm. And um, it's funny. <laughs> A lot of self uh, discovery. <laughs> so, I'd like to thank Excellent. you very much. It's been okay, very, thank you. yes. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Gwen. Yeah, thank you know, in you Malaysia, you coming to Malaysia. Okay. Um, perhaps <laughs> okay. I invite uh, Tay. You come to Malaysia. Uh, oh, Gwen saying oh, come so. to Malaysia. Oh, yes, yes. Well, <laughs> Uh, yes. I came, I came to Malaysia, I think, uh, on four occasions or, already and really enjoy that uh, as, as part of that. And I, I used to run the yeah. some yoga classes during uh, uh, Banta's retreats. And I, I think I did I meet you then? I can't remember. In Penang. Uh, he was there in Penang. I don't think so. I will remember. <laughs> Ah, okay, oh. okay, because I was in Penang and down in Kuala Lumpur, so uh, uh, for that, uh, uh, but it would be very nice. Yeah. If because I, 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 yeah, I just joined the retreat only once, I enjoyed ah. it. Yeah, the very last one that is about two years now. Yeah, 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 excellent. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> thank you. Um, and thank you so well, much, thank you. <laughs> Hey, perhaps I can invite you. Did, did you have uh, any questions around your experience or what did you notice? Sorry, not very clear. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Your question. Uh, hey. Yes. Uh, do you have any any questions or comments? Um, I think I think this is something that is very important. Mm -hmm. Um, to incorporate with our meditation, right? I, Yoga I think... on its own is like the pose. Yeah, it's more like a pose. It, it, so it is. It, 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 I think we need to practice more. Yeah, I, I like to think of the sitting posture not as a completely still posture, but a, a posture that's moving very slowly. <laughs> and, and so it's still a dynamic oh, yes. <laughs> Still a dynamic play. Yes, yes. <laughs> Good. Right. Uh, in the Hindu, yeah, is there anything? Something very different. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Um, Indu, is there any comment you'd like Thank to make? Um, I would recommend that um, I enjoyed it. Yes. Thank the you. meditators, right? The meditators, mm -hmm. I would recommend that they do yoga before they start meditation. Like just now, when we did uh, the meditation, uh, we did the yoga first, mm -hmm. the body is limbered. Mm. And it's very soft. Yes. So when we go into the meditation, it was very easy. Good. Very easy to go in. And um, you could sit longer hours, I think. Mm. Good. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I hope also is that the hours that you sit, or the hour or the half hour, you drop into the meditation more quickly. And, and so there's a, 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 a greater benefit in, in, in your sit uh, because of that. I would think that you're already in the meditation mode. Mm. It's not that you drop in faster, mm. but by doing the limbering and all that, very mm. consciously, mindfully, you're mm. already into the meditation. So it's not like this is one action and that's another yeah. action. Yeah, that's, that's a better description. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay. that's how I felt. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Gwen. Let's move to Indu. You were saying, you were saying Indu. Thank you. I am uh, basically from BSY, that is Bihar School of Yoga. So this is very different, but it's nice to know. And yes, nice to maybe incorporate it somewhere. <laughs> okay, yes. good, good. Well, thank you. And, uh, Are you familiar with BSY, Bihar School of Yoga? Uh, um, the, no. which school of, the Bihar School of Yoga. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I like some of their material because uh, they talk about this uh, energetic support very clearly. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So that's uh, that's my training so far. <laughs> ah well. Yeah, so that's a very very good basis. Uh, very yeah. Good basis. That's what I'm saying. So yours is very much different, but still, I I enjoyed it, and something can be incorporated. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Because yeah. this 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 was largely speaking warm up exercises and and uh, just building a little bit of flexibility, taking the stiffness out of the body which is often such a distraction in, in the practice. And then, then the, there's more, uh, if you look at the earlier recordings we did for uh, this, the twin group, you'll see that there's a, another range to the yoga that's available for some people, but for others, they, you know, this is enough. This is yeah, enough. absolutely. Those okay, recordings you. are available? Your recordings uh, are available? Those recordings should be available. If you ask Bante Dhammagabesi, he'll tell you where where they're um, uploaded. Okay. I, I think they're loaded up on, onto one. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I, I, I saw one of them uh, was that uh, I wanted to share, but uh, some other uh, video shared today, so I did not share. Okay. If I maybe share after this uh, the previous two sessions. Yes, that will be nice. That will be nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right. Uh, and, and Paul, do you I have any comments? One last thing is that I think there'll be less injuries. You know, with yoga, if you do it by force, mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of aches and, you know, torn muscles and things like that and stretches. Yeah. If you're doing it mindfully, as in the meditation with the breath, mm -hmm. you'll find that there'll be less injuries, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, also, also, when you do the yoga from this energetic place, um, what you notice is that you can't, push through tension. 
If you're working energetically and using the energetic body to, to support you, you can't push through tension. So then it becomes a very safe practice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. And Tei uh, Chao uh, Su, do you have anything you'd like to uh, add? Me? Yes. Uh, I think uh, this, this practice is uh, <clears throat> uh, very useful. Uh, basically, I think uh, for me, <clears throat> I, I, I use uh, a, a setup whenever I sit. So mm -hmm. essentially, it is useful as a setup for prior to the meditation. So mm -hmm. it becomes very convenient. I, I recall some time ago, my, my late master, Bhante Punanji, taught us yoga. And when I did it the first time, it was really, really good. You feel relaxed and uh, your, your whole flow of uh, sensation becomes very uh, acute. So mm -hmm. in that sense, uh, I'm very grateful uh, for this little practice. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Good. So thank you, uh, Bhante Dhammagavesi, uh, for the opportunity to uh, share this. And, uh, and thank uh, you for uh, sharing your uh, kind of knowledge uh, with everybody. And uh, this is kind of, I think, uh, we have seen, I have seen uh, personally uh, the people who have done uh, yoga and uh, uh, in the retreat. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have felt uh, kind of different uh, while uh, doing the retreat. And it has not been uh, kind of a hindrance for them, but it has uh, kind of enhanced uh, their kind of practice. And they mm -hmm. all seem to be happy uh, uh, having done this, you know. Yeah. So this has been a kind of a experience I have seen in person. So that is the reason I want to share that more people do uh, come to know about this and uh, they incorporate. So it is very uh, good uh, that you have shared. And uh, that is something which we will kind of continue uh, whenever we get an uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, maybe uh, another aspects of it and certain things we can uh, more add to the practice and uh, make it into a kind of a something that uh, we can also uh, do uh, while we are doing retreats in India. So we may kind of... Uh, uh, invite you over even situations are uh, kind of more conductive and that means uh, they are more conducive to travel. Mm -hmm. Then we'll see. <laughs> I, yeah. I want to do like Bhante Punaji also as, as uh, you have heard now that he used to do yoga and uh, uh, kind of teach those things. Something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very energizing. Energizing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it lasts, it lasts until about towards the evening. If we do it in the morning at five and we do it, our energy level goes until beyond the dinner dinner hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then we'll share the merit. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good session. Okay, then. Yes, then. Thank you, Thank you so much. Very good session. Okay, we'll share the merit and uh, we can uh, end the session. Is there anything you want to add, uh, 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 you? I'm sorry. Anything? Do you want to add anything or no. do you want to? No, I think you, you said everything that. Uh, so thank, was thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. Yeah. Thank you. May, thank suffer you so May suffering once be Please suffering free, the fear struck fearless yeah. be. May the grieving yeah. shed all grief. And may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth 
devas and nagas of mighty power share the merit of ours may they long protect the buddha dispensation sadhu sadhu sadhu